A beautiful Sunday morning greetings to you as you tune in once again to this, our Sunday school session. I'm thanking the Lord for sparing our lives to see this another beautiful Sunday morning. And we are certainly blessed. And God has been such a wonderful God to, to us as a people who lives on these islands of the Cayman Islands. And this morning again, we have another beautiful day. I was outside early with my wife and enjoying the atmosphere of the morning. And it's certainly a beautiful Sunday morning. We pray that you will enjoy this day and that the blessings of the Lord will be very near and dear to you and that you will find your experience with the Lord, one that is beautiful, one that is close, very intimate and real and enjoying the presence of the Lord as you go through your life. So thank you again this morning for tuning in. And today we are on our last lesson of this quarter. And we've been studying about the um, justifi about justification and we've had some very lovely topics on justification if I will just read them through what we have studied so far justified men of the Old Testament conviction of sin Jesus came for our justification repentance forgiveness restitution knowing we are justified a new life forsaking sin our testimony, backsliding, justification for all, and today's final lesson, rewards for the justified. So we're going to see what the reward is or what is awaiting um, the justified. And I trust that we will uh, benefit from this lesson. Let's have a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you again this morning for your blessings on us this another Sunday morning, beginning of another new week. We thank you for the privilege that we have, dear Lord, to have your word, dear Lord, and to be able to freely worship and fellowship and to proclaim your word. We pray, dear Lord, that the freedom of your word will always be something that we can embrace, dear Lord. And I pray, dear Lord, as we Receive your word, dear Lord, that we will make it a part of our lives, dear Lord. Let the word dwell in us and help us, dear Lord, to be able to live out your word as um, we understand it and as you uh, anoint us, dear Lord, with your, 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 your spirit, dear Lord, to, to live in your will. So bless us now, dear Lord, as we study this lesson, Rewards of the Justified. Be with each one. Thank, for, thank you for each one who has been faithful in following these lessons over the weeks, dear Lord. I pray that you will help them, dear Lord, that their cups will be filled up, dear Lord, and that they will rejoice in your presence. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. So the rewards of the justified. The aim of the lesson is to point out the rewards that are for those who are justified. To point out, this is just uh, a few things that is going to be um, pointed out here or brought to our attention, but just to give us an understanding that there is going to be a reward and that there, there are consequences um, for the things that we do in life okay so the aim again is to point out the rewards that are for those who are justified remember we've been studying on justification and we have a very beautiful um, memory verse here which is found in second timothy 4 and 8 and it reads henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also 
that love is appearing. So, that's a very comforting, assuring um, verse of scripture there. Uh, Paul is, has, has, has written this, and he was talking about at the end of his life there, when he summed up what he had been through and how he uh, fought for the, 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 the cause of Christ, that he knew with assurance that he had lived in the will of God and that there was going to be a re reward awaiting him. So he said, henceforth, <coughs> excuse me, henceforth, there is laid up or there is awaiting him a crown of righteousness, a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, take into account those words, righteous, all right? a crown of righteousness, which the, the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, right? Whenever that day comes for uh, Paul to be in the presence of God, he is looking forward for the righteous God to deal with him righteously and present him with a crown of righteousness, okay? And what he has said here following that is very encouraging and we should take courage from this also. And he goes on to say, and not to me only, this is awaiting, but unto all them also that love his appearing. So in other words, those of us who love the cause of Christ, who love to live in his righteousness, shall also have a crown of righteousness awaiting us on that day for us too, which I went whenever that day will be for us, okay? So we are encouraged here, just like Paul uh, is encouraging the brethren there, that this is not only for me. Just don't look at what I have done, but look at what you are doing also and take joy, take um, um, uh, consolation in knowing that you also will have a crown of righteousness if you are faithful in your righteousness, okay? Remember, it's righteousness that's going to give us this crown, okay? Not unrighteousness, okay? So, um, and we have the, the introduction says here, there is no man but who shall receive a reward for the life that he has lived. Uh, he who has followed righteousness shall be rewarded not only with life, but also with blessings that God alone knows. For no man can give even a cup of cold water in the name of a disciple without receiving a reward. To the man who has devoted his energies and time to the service of the devil shall be a reward of great disappointment. Suffering beyond anything the mind can comprehend. But no true Christian labors for the reward alone that is promised. He desires to serve in this time world, given little consideration to the future rewards. There are times, however, when the pressure of trial and temptation may be so darkened the spiritual horizon, that survival may be hinged on the comfort derived from the promises of the reward. Okay, so as a Christian, living a Christian life, it should be so beautiful to, to live and to enjoy that we are not only thinking of that eternal reward, uh, that is anticipated, but we find joy in the service of the Lord while we are here living in this time world, okay? Like it says there, there are um, 
But no true Christian labors for the reward alone that is promised. Okay? It's not, that should not only be the objective of our devotion to God, is to get that crown of righteousness. Sure, we will get it, but we should not only make that be the single um, focus. We should also focus on what is required of us while we are here living among our, our fellow men, right? Doing the things that Christ instructs us to do, being good examples, letting our lights shine among uh, men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So we need to live uh, a, an effective um, life that witness for Christ and also there are blessings that come in living for Christ while we are sojourning our, our life here on earth, okay? And it pays great dividends to serve the Lord. I can tell you that from my experience, okay? Okay, now let's look at scriptures. Romans 5 and 1 says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We're speaking of the rewards of the justified. Therefore, being justified by faith, right? We will have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So remember, we have to come to Christ because the Bible says no man can come unto the Father, unto Christ, unless the Father draws him, right? So we have to be introduced to Christ for God to receive us, okay? So therefore, being justified by faith, we have to have that faith, the belief, the understanding that um, there is a God, there is the Son of God, there is the Holy Spirit, and for the purpose of each one of them, the, the work that they do within our lives or for humanity, okay? And if we have that faith in believing that the Trinity is there to do its work for us and in us, okay? And we receive that and we accept Christ as our personal Savior, we will have peace with God, okay? Uh, what does the meditation say about this one? Peace with God. A sinner is a rebel against God, against his government, against his will. When a sinner is convicted of his sins and comes to Christ with true godless sorrow, repenting of and forsaking his sins, that's the key, repenting, being sorrowful for it, and forsaking it, right? Walking away from it, ignoring it, living away and not living um, away from the things that were sinful. God forgives him and peace is the result, right? When you do that, you will have this peace that we're talking about here. This peace with God is not alone for a time, but for eternity. And why eternity? If the one who is saved keeps his experience with God. So that's the eternal security there. You have to keep, right? It's not just coming in and presenting yourself and say, well, I'm a Christian and um, that's it. And that it's going to make that eternal security. No, you have to maintain your walk with God. You have to maintain your fellowship with God, okay? It's a daily taking up of your cross and following. So if we maintain that peace with God, we will have that eternal security with him also. And verse 2 of the same um, chapter 5 says, By whom also we have access by faith 
into the grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. So, because of our faith, right, and the peace that we, you know, we receive from God and through God, we also have the access by the same faith into his grace, his, his favor within, wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. The meditation says here, when a person is justified, he is not only, he is not only has peace with God, but also the door of standing grace is open unto him. And this is the experience that you receive through sanctification, which will be the study of our next uh, quarter. Okay? So, we need to have that standing grace if we are going to receive this crown of righteousness that Paul spoke about. Okay? And if we're going to meet God in, with, in, in peace, we have to maintain our walk with him. All right, let's move on. Ephesians 2 and 1 says, And you had he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin. And you had he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin. Every one of us who came into this world has sinned and need forgiveness. And um, this verse here says again, and you or me hath he quickened, God has quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sin. What does it mean to be quickened? Okay. The word quickening means to resurrect or to make alive. Remember, it says we were dead in our trespasses and sin. So God has quickened us through the experience of salvation or of, through the experience of sins forgiving or forgiveness of sin, right? So, so um, the word quicken means to resurrect or to make alive. A sinner is dead in trespasses and sin. He is following the flesh, obeying his father, the devil. When he comes to Christ and is justified, he is rewarded with life. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away. And behold, all things become new. No one knows what true living is until he finds life in Christ. That's where true living is. True living is not having the abundance of things that this world um, provides for us or is attainable through our quest for them. If we are going after that pursuit, we're going to have a lot of things physically, but inside we're going to be empty because the physical things were not made to fill the void of that spiritual um, desire, um, that spiritual part of us that God has designed for us to worship him. So not saying anything is wrong with having things in, in, in life, but our main focus should not be on those things. Our purpose, our purpose for living should be to live in the will of God and to let God bless our lives. And these are some of the blessings that God will give you when you come to him. He will allow you to enjoy um, certain things in life and um, possess certain things in life, but your focus must be on him, right? And he will give to you according to what he sees we can handle, okay? 
but let not your mind go the wrong way. Now, 1 John 3, 14 says, We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Rewards for the justified. One of the first things that happens when we come to meet God in, this, in, the, in the, the act of forgiveness of our sins, it takes away the burden of sin and it takes away the, 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 the desire of hate, of holding grudge. And it replaces that with love. What does it say here? We know that we have passed from death, death of sin, unto life, life in Christ. Because we do what? We love the brethren. If we find that we are professing to be a Christian, a child of God, and we are not loving our brethren, our fellow men, our family, our co-worker, you are missing out on something. So, and it's not going to be the experience of your, your walk with God is not going to be what it should be. We need to have that capacity to love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. And what is that? Is still abiding in sin. Not my words. That's the scripture. He that loveth not his brother I could interpret this same, he's still a sinner. He abided in death. Okay. Um, what does the meditation on that say? Let's see what gets some help here. We know millions today belong to church. They hope they are saved. They hope they will go to heaven. This is right. Hoping. Um, when they die, they hope to go to heaven when they die but they really don't know and that is a sad situation that a lot of people do not have the, the, the assurance that they are saved okay so but they really don't know how sad for jesus died to purchase for us a no so salvation he wants us to be clear that our sins are forgiven. He wants us to be clear that we are walking in fellowship with him and in the will of God, okay? When we are rewarded of this, of the just, sorry. <clears throat> when we are saved, we are spiritually, I said this before, resurrected. We pass from death unto life. The reward of the justified is a knowledge that he is saved. So you know when you are saved. Do you know when you're sick? Do you know when you're hungry? Do you know when you're loved or when you're not loved? I'm sure you do. So why can't you know when you are saved? Eh? You can know and you should know. This brings peace. When that know that you know comes in, in our lives, we have peace with God. That's when the peace comes. Another reward is that the love of God is shed abroad in his heart or in your heart and he, you will hate no one, right? The love of Christ comes in and it takes away that um, wretched spirit of hate and it replaces that hate with love and the peace of God dwelling in you and you have the capacity to love your fellow men. Now moving on, um, John 1 and 11 he came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as receive him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, 
even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of the blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God, right? He that come unto, he came unto his own, speaking of Jesus coming unto the Jews. And what it says here, and his own received him not. Some did, but the in 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 um in the, the the whole um body or believers of the Jews or what I should say the the nation of the Jews that's the word I'm looking for did not receive him of who he is or who he came as they ridicule him they they they, they question him they 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 persecute him and they crucified him because they did not receive him, okay? So he came unto his own, and his own received him not, okay? He did what was right. He came to his own first. Charity begins at home. So he went to his own first. They didn't receive him. But as many as received him, even those that he came to, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to whom, to, even to them that believe on his name as Christ being the Messiah, the Son of God, the one who came to be the propitiation for our sins and the, the, the slain lamb that was placed on the cross for the redemption of our sins. So if we believe him, then they receive their forgiveness. Verse 13 says, which were born not, if we receive God now, we are not born of blood, nor of the will of the flesh of man, naturally, nor of the will of man, naturally, but we are born of God, right? Spiritually rebirth. Remember um, Nicodemus and Jesus' conversation? Nicodemus being a ruler of the Jews, and he could not understand what it meant to be born again. He asked Jesus, can I enter the second time in my mother's womb and be born? No, that's not the birth that Christ was talking about. It's a spiritual makeover. We all have sinned, fallen short of the grace of God, and, right? And we need redemption. That's why Christ came, okay? And Christ will give us that pardon if we come and ask him for it. And then we will be born into the will of God. I must hasten. Uh, Matthew 25, 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory and before him shall be gathered all the nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. This is going to be the day of reckoning, right? This is going to be the day when final judgment and separation is going to be um, meted out to, to humanity. So, when the Son of Man shall come, when his second return, in his glory, and the holy angels coming with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, right? And before him shall be gathered all nations. Every nation upon the face of this earth is going to be present. And every man that born in the upon this in the, in this time world is going to be there to receive their reward. Remember, we talked about the rewards of the justified. Okay, so he says here, um, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats and if we understand what that means the nature of those two animals are so different right so you don't want to keep them 
together. Let the sheep graze on one side of the pasture and the goats on the other side. Or else there's going to be a problem. Okay? And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats are on the left hand. Most people are right-handed. And not to sound prejudiced, but I'm glad I'm right-handed too. Okay? But if something happens to my right hand, I will have to try to learn how to use my left hand as much as I possibly can to make up for the loss of the right hand. Now, so the right hand here symbolizes on the side of God, right? In the will of God. And that's where we want to be, on the right side of God, in the will of God, okay? So, um, then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world, right? So God has this place prepared for us from the foundation of the world, right? You remember he told in us in, in the New Testament there that we must not be troubled. He's going to prepare a place for us because in his father's house there are many mansions, right? He didn't say he's going to prepare a mansion for each one of us. But he said, I'm going to prepare a place for you within that, those mansions, okay? So there are many mansions. So he's going to secure a place for us within those mansions, okay? Sometimes we get the idea we're going to get a mansion up in heaven. No, it's not. I don't think so. We, we're thinking in the carnal sense down here when we think about possessing great big houses, okay? Now, so the kingdom is prepared for from the foundation of the world and God is going to put those who are found on the right side on that in in that place <coughs> excuse me concluding Matthew 5 12 says rejoice and be exceeding glad for great is your reward in heaven for so persecuted they the prophets which are before you um this is in Matthew 5 here in the Beatitude setting there when Jesus told his disciples must rejoice when we are persecuted. As Christians, we are not going to be favored by everybody. We're not going to be accepted by everybody. It might be your, your children, your wife, your husband, or your co-worker, or the politicians, whoever it might be. There are some people that are going to disfavor you, right? But he said, don't worry about them. If they even persecute you and put you to, 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 to the firing squad, as it were, there is a day of rejoicing coming. He said, Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they, the prophets, which were before you. So take um, courage here. Take a, a, a note here. Take this as an example. You're not the only one that's going to go through this, right? Others has been there before, and they are going to be rewarded um, justly for it. And Second Corinthians, the last verse here says, Second Corinthians five one. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands eternal in the heavens and that's where we want to find ourselves in that eternal home in that eternal presence of god right within the a room in the mansion that he has gone to prepare for us okay that that should be our desire to live in the will of God here. So at the end of our day, we shall hear him say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joys of thy Lord. Okay? So there is a reward for the justified. We were talking about the justified here. There is also going to be a reward for the unjustified or the 
does that work in, on Justify? Um, but there is going to be a reward for the saints and there is going to be a reward for the sinners. And we want to be found as Christians, or, we, or if we are Christians, I will say, we will be found on the right side of God. Let us be that focus that we want to hear well done and welcome, enter into the joys of your Lord. So the words of the justified is positive. It can happen, but we have to put in the works and we have to make sure that we are living in the will of God, die in the will of God. And when we live and die in the will of God, we shall resurrect in the will of God. And then we shall have that eternal security in the will of God. Okay. Thank you very much for your kind attention. May God bless us until next Sunday when I think we'll be studying on justification. Father in heaven, we thank you for this beautiful lesson dear Lord, concluding the subject of justification. And we thank you, dear Lord, for the reward that awaits us, those who live in your righteousness and die in your righteousness, that we shall resurrect in your righteousness and we shall have you say unto us, welcome, thou good and faithful servant. So, Lord, we pray that you will help us, dear Lord, that we will focus on our righteous reward that will be awaiting us if we live here as you plan for us to live. So bless us. Give us a good week, dear Lord. Give us a good day. Let us rejoice, dear Lord, in your will, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a great and a victorious week.